My name's David Hoffman. Uh, I'm a mediator, arbitrator, collaborative law practitioner, um, and I'm a dad, uh, and a husband. Um, I have three kids. My oldest is 38, my youngest is 22, and uh, my wife and I have been married 29 years. And uh, with luck, we'll, uh, I think we've got momentum. So, um, so family is a big part of my life, and, and, and so is work. And, and I know that one of the things that you invited me to talk about is the way in which my work has caused me to, uh, to feel very passionate at times about uh, the possibilities of how this work can make the world a better place. The story of my path from uh, you know, a college-age, idealistic kid who was uh, very much caught up in the civil rights movement, the anti-war movement, women's rights movement, environmental movement, um, movement for gay and lesbian rights. And uh, th that was swirling uh, around me uh, during my teenage years and my uh, 20s. And uh, I think I was predisposed to want to be part of that movement for social change by virtue of my Jewish background. I uh, grew up in a Reform uh, Jewish synagogue where our rabbi, uh, Eve Schusterman, was a leader in the civil rights movement. And Judaism has as part of its core the concept of tikkun olam, to make the world a better place, to heal the world. And so it was always part of my understanding of what we were put on earth to do, is to leave it better than we found it. And the civil rights movement, the anti-war movement, those other movements created an opportunity, a powerful, powerful opportunity to do that. Uh, the next step in my path was uh, I thought that teaching would be a good way to make the world a better place. I was very inspired by some of the teachers that I had. And the concept of, uh, the Buddhist concept of right livelihood was one that gave me uh, cause to think about uh, what would feel what would feel right and teaching felt right it, it seemed to be congruent congruent with things that I enjoyed doing things where I felt I could make an impact things where I felt I could be effective and so I pursued that for a little while the teaching market in American studies which was my field uh, was pretty weak in the mid-1970s when I was in a, um, a graduate school program and my fellowship ran out. There were no jobs readily available. And so I decided for, uh, for a while I'd be a woodworker. And that felt like great livelihood as well, was working with my hands. And uh, so I have no regrets about the seven years as a woodworker. I loved it. But I also realized toward the end that it didn't give me a chance to engage with the world in the way that, that I wanted to. I, wanted, I was looking for a livelihood that would have um, some social change components, some intellectual components, and I had a daughter at that point, and I recognized that with my very limited skills as a woodworker, that being able to send her to college was going to be a challenge. So it wasn't very best way to uh, uh, pay a mortgage and pay for college and that sort of thing. So I thought, I'm either going to become a psychotherapist or become a lawyer. And I read about those two occupations. And uh, I find it interesting that uh, I chose law for very mundane and practical reasons. I thought it would be an easier way to make a living. Uh, three years of study and lots of different things one could do with it. Whereas as a psychotherapist, one is somewhat beholden to the managed care regime. Uh, and uh, there's basically one thing that, that you can do with that degree. And, and having 
pursued American studies and having found that, well, when the market changed, that was a problem. I wanted something that was very diverse. Uh, had diverse uh, opportunities. I thought law did that, and I was very inspired by some of the stories of change that was you know, created by uh, by lawyers. So I chose law school. But um, as you and I both know, um, mediation and dispute resolution really occupies a space somewhere between those two paths. It draws on some of the insights that psychotherapy and psychology provide. And it draws on some of the strengths of you know, the analytic strengths of law. Uh, one of the stories that I often tell in trainings is uh, uh, a lawyer uh, who said that for her, the thing that was so great about mediation was it drew, uh, and she was both a lawyer and a mediator, um, that it had the analytic rigor of law without the viciousness and it had the empathic qualities of psychotherapy without the aimlessness. And I thought that was a very nice way to describe it. Um, and I got uh, in, to experience that other path, the path not chosen, um, when I married my wife, uh, Beth, who was, um, we met when I was a woodworker and she was a potter. We met at a craft fair. Um, and then she became a psychotherapist and I became a lawyer. And so I enjoy so much uh, her accounts of, of practice, and, uh, I think that I learned a tremendous amount from her, uh, and it informs my mediation and dispute resolution work. It also has influenced me in the sense that I see how, in my practice as a lawyer and as a mediator, uh, having a multidisciplinary approach is extremely valuable. And so when I left the the rather large law firm where I practiced for 17 years, uh, I decided that I wanted to have one or more mental health professionals in the practice with me. So, um, so let me uh, zoom in uh, for a moment on those years when I left the, uh, being a woodworker, went to law school, and then went to work in a law firm. A lot of people who study mediation uh, in law school uh, ask me, and they probably ask you as well, how can I make a living doing dispute resolution work? And it's not so easy right out of law school. There aren't that many opportunities. And so I did an apprenticeship of 17 years working in a large law firm. And after I was there about um, seven years, I got training as a mediator and as an arbitrator. And so during the last 10 years in the firm, more and more of my work was as a mediator, arbitrator. Um, I think those seven years of litigation work were, were valuable. Seeing what the alternative looks like was valuable not only in the sense of helping me understand what I was, what alternative I was trying to shape, but it also giving me a common language and a common experience with the people that I work with who are still enmeshed in, in litigation work. We need courts. Courts are a very important you know, uh, uh, institution in a democratic society. Uh, so I don't, uh, and I think one of the things that our dispute resolution movement does, which is very unfortunate, is to disparage the courts, and disparage litigation. Uh, it's absolutely the case that there's way more litigation in, than perhaps we need in our society. Uh, but the courts provide such an important resource for establishing justice, for test cases, uh, for helping the poor uh, and uh, people who've been discriminated against. Um, but having s experienced how much overuse of litigation there is, and I saw that in my work as a litigator at Hill and Barlow, um, I began transitioning to dispute resolution practice. So that's been, uh, since the year 2002, that's been my main focus.